Hi everybody, welcome to Shark Tales. This week we're gonna catch up on shark news, learn about how scientists are figuring out how many seals white sharks eat off the coast of Cape Cod, and talking about what stresses sharks out. This past week we were only able to make one research trip the weather wasn't great, again, unfortunately, um, and we mostly worked off the coast of the southern end of Cape Cod, so off of Monomoy. But as usual, this time of the year, since it's peak white shark season, people reported shark sightings all up and down the coast of the Outer Cape. Look at me, coming right up to the boat. Oh. So there have been a lot of reports of predations over the past couple of weeks, and a lot of those predations have been reported off of Nassau Beach. This week, somebody on the beach took a video of a white shark feeding on a seal. And what you'll see in the video is uh, the shark fins kind of pop out of the water, which isn't something we actually see a lot during the course of our research. If you think about white sharks, their hunting strategy is all based on stealth. So unlike what you see in the movies, where white sharks are swimming around with their fins sticking out of the water everywhere, we actually don't see that all that often. So sharks, believe it or not, actually get stressed out. And so to talk more about that, I'm gonna throw things to Dr. Nick Whitney from the New England Aquarium. Do sharks get stressed? Yes, they do, especially when they're being caught on a hook and line. And I don't mean the kind of stress like, oh, I have a deadline at work this week stress. Think about it more as if someone suddenly forced you to do like 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups and 100 burpees, let's say. This is severe physiological stress. And we can actually measure this in the sharks by taking a blood sample and measuring their stress levels in the blood. We can also attach a variety of electronic tags to the fin to find out what happens to the sharks after they're released. And we've learned through our research that it's not just because you see a shark swim away strongly after it's caught and released doesn't mean that it actually survived. They can, they can die hours or sometimes days later uh, just as a result of that stress. And so this is something we're studying right now in sandbar sharks caught on the beach. And we've studied it in other species caught by longline or by recreational charter fishermen. And in general, we just recommend try and get your shark landed as quickly as possible. Uh, get the hooks and line out of the mouth if you can and keep it in the water. You can imagine lifting a shark out of the water where it's not gonna be able to breathe and taking pictures or something, that's just gonna increase the stress even more. So uh, all of these things are, are things that we're studying actively right now in our shark research at the New England Aquarium. And the message is, yes, sharks do get stressed. So be kind when you're doing your catch and release fishing. How many seals could a white shark eat? That is a question we get a lot. And it's not one we have a great answer for at this point. So this summer, working in collaboration with the Division of Marine Fisheries, we're putting out accelerometer tags on white sharks off the coast of the Cape Cod. If you don't know what an accelerometer is, it's that little device that's in every smartphone. Basically, a good way of thinking about it is that we're giving iPhones to white sharks. Those tags are gonna give us a really good idea of fine scale, three dimensional behavior of these animals. And by looking at that, we're gonna be able to figure out when these sharks are feeding, when they're going after seals. Thanks everybody for tuning into Shark Tales. Follow NBC10 Boston on their social media and listen to the Shark Tales podcast for a little more insight into what research is like behind the scenes.